Well, just another quick video update. I now have some EFIS panels installed in my glare shield. Uh, thank you very much, Vince, for supplying these. Vince has a website which I think is homecockpits.com. I'll throw a link in the in the video description for anyone who's looking to purchase these. Absolutely fantastic. Um, super happy with the way they turned out. Everything will be fully functional. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the last piece I needed to get the primary flight instrumentation functional so I can actually start taking a few test flights. Uh, now to interface them should be interesting. This is kind of a, the mess I've got currently, but uh, this is what comes out of the EFIS panels. I've tested the backlighting, it looks great. Now I think it's time to get Ron's reversion panels and these fired up and functional. I probably won't bother with the uh, FGC as it sits because I have the, the SciTech one functional down here for, for testing purposes until uh, someone makes a, a panel available and then I'll work at interfacing the whole thing. Anyway, that's kind of where we sit. This is the, the mess back here. I have that PC running the console right now and it's working very well. My primary Jet 45 PC for the captain side is not working well. It has a, a motherboard issue which causes it to overheat and kind of crap out. So it's uh, time to replace that. <laughs> On that note, uh, I traded a, a good friend of mine a foosball table for this PC. This thing is a bit of a monster, and it'd be almost a, a shame to use it only for Jet 45 instrumentation, but I'm not sure what else I'm going to do with it. This thing, I've never even seen anything like this. Uh, I'll try and get this cover off and show you what lives underneath. I have not seen anything this industrial before. Here's the cooler in relation to my fingers, two of them. Fan cooled from there, fan cooled from there, and fan cooled again up in there. These are about six inch fans or so. And up here lives the hard drive that came in it. This thing is a 15,000 RPM SAS drive. I almost regret going to the i7 computer I purchased because this thing will probably run the sim just fine. But I think I'll put it in as a Jet 45 PC and uh, use it as such for now. Uh, like I say, it's almost kind of a waste. I've got an NVIDIA graphics card. I haven't even looked up to see what it is, but it's dual DVI output on the back anyhow. So that was my most recent addition. Uh, see where I end up with it. It's just about time for me to get the yoke set up and, and pedals so I can actually take a flight with this thing. Right now they're just sitting on a speaker stand. I'll have to come up with something because uh, it's a little too low for my purposes. My plan is uh, I think I'm going to put some uh, tactile transducers under the yoke as well as under the seating so I can get some vibration and not just from this uh, sub that I have running. Anyway, we'll see how that works out. Yesterday I ordered some more of the AML 51 caps to go on these switches, which actually that one I already have. Ron nicely machined the duels for me. But all of these, I, I needed more caps. They were quite expensive when I purchased them, so I, I did a limited run. And that will make all these white ones look like these. And then it's just a matter of interfacing the LEDs to the FDS SIS board, which is out back. I now have, uh, if I haven't mentioned it before, I have a designation for uh, my aircraft. It'll be uh, C-Fans. Uh, that is actually a real Learjet based out of Canada. I think it's now being sold. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's coming along. I opted not to get the, uh, the throttle quadrant yet. Um, kicking my rear a little bit that I didn't get the proper Lear one, but Sacrifices must be made. Um, primary instrumentation first, I think, is the way I'm going to go. I just have to figure out how I'm going to get that monitor perched up here 
uh, initially I'll have to make a stand to support it and then decide uh, what I'm going to do for my primary instrumentation. There's some exciting things happening with the projectors. With uh, a single projector and warping software doing uh, a huge field of view, it's very tempting to go that route. It'll be uh, significantly less cost than, uh, than going the, the three LCDs and the triple head. But uh, I may give, I have the AM, uh, the, AM the ATI card in uh, this i7 rig, which is capable of I affinity, but I'm going to need at least one active display port adapter. So I'm not sure which way I'm going to go yet initially to get in the air because I don't have a shell. Everything's kind of wide open for the time being. I think uh, I'm getting to an exciting stage for me anyway. Uh, not too long ago, I got uh, Ron's bezels up underneath there for the standbys. And uh, in the next day or so, I'll get this glare shield mounted and uh, get the uh, get the, the strip across with some LEDs behind it. I have a strip of red LEDs. I'm going to stick with that for now. Um, yet again, a little departure from the Leer, but the red doesn't, uh, doesn't mess with one's night vision. So I'll give that a try first. It's an easy change if I don't like it. And... Uh, Ron made me these nice Davertron covers a little while back. Pretty happy with that. And yeah, coming along pretty good. Uh, not a huge amount of change, but I uh, thought the Evis panels were definitely worth noting, and that's where I stand for now. Thanks for watching.